Hello, everyone. Uh, sorry, I um, haven't recorded any uh, podcast for about two days, I think. Um, my voice went out. I couldn't record. Um, my voice is still a little shaky, but I'm going to see what we can do, see what God can do, you know. Um, let's get started with a word of prayer and then we get started with our devotion. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for the strength you've given us in our body. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for starting us in our new day, Father God. Father God, as we um, partake in this devotional, help us to understand what you're trying to say to us. Help us to um, apply it to our daily lives in Jesus' mighty name. Normally on Sunday, we go over to memory verse, but like I said, we didn't have a podcast or memory verse for Sunday. So this is our memory verse for the week. Psalms 94, 19. When doubt filled my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. When doubt filled my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. Psalms 94, 19. Verse of the day is Numbers 23 and 12. He answers, shouldn't I say exactly what the Lord puts in my mouth? Topic, carry the fire, not start it. Affirmations, I'm going to say it. I'm going to pause behind each one to give you opportunity to say it. I will carry the fire. I am a mouthpiece. I am brave. I speak love to others. Thoughts. When God gives us a word or gives us a message for anyone, we shouldn't alter it. We shouldn't apply our flair to it. We must say precisely what he wants from us. It's quite a few people that he has gave the word to, to in the Bible. And these men had to go to these people and say what exactly God wanted them to say. Nothing more or less. When we become a trusted vessel of God, he expects us to do what he says and how he says it. You will have people tell you what they would have done. You will have people tell you how you should have done it. But when you are a vessel or a servant of God, you must obey him and do what he is asking you to do. Second Samuel 12 and 7. Then Nathan, Nathan said to David, you are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I am anointed you king over Israel and I deliver you from the hands of Saul. I know this has been has to be hard to tell a king that he's out of order. To tell David of all people that he is, he is not in good standings with God. But Nathan goes on to say in verse 8, I gave you master house to you and your master wives into your arms. I gave you all Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Nathan not only told him how disappointed God was, but he also had to take it further and say, this God says, if you weren't happy, I would have given you more. See, being a mouthpiece of God, peace of God isn't easy. But when God tells you to speak, it doesn't matter what they, what they are, who they are. You must speak the word of God. Verse 12, you did it in secret, but I do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. God tells him here, you did every bit of your dirt in secret in the world. But I knew and I would do this in front of everyone so they may see. See, what we do in private isn't private. What we think we are sneaking and doing, we aren't God. We, we aren't. God sees everything. It's no way to hide the offenses of the fulfillment of the flesh from God because he smells it before we do it. First King 13 and 2. But the word of the Lord, he cried out against the altar. Altar, altar. This is what the Lord says. A son named Joshua, Josiah, will be born to the house of David. And on you, he will sacrifice the priests of the high places who make offering here. And human bones will be burnt on you. This prophet had to go to King Jeroboam and tell him what thus says the Lord. Not only did he have to do that, but God commanded him not to eat bread, drink water, and return by the way he came. But when God tells us to do something, we can't do what we want. We can't listen to others. This prophet sadly listened to a lying prophet. He did everything but this one thing. He listened to someone lying to him instead of the voice of God. We must ignore others and hear the voice of God. Verse 18 through 19. The old prophet answered, I am a prophet as you are. And an angel said to me by the word of the Lord, bring him back with you to your house so that he may eat bread and drink water. But he was lying to him. So the man of God returned with him and ate and drank in his house. God doesn't trust just anyone to relay a message. He doesn't just tell anyone to talk to his people. If God is asking you today to talk to his people or to give a word, do it. And don't tell everyone what was told to you. A lot of people don't understand that when we do as God said, he will bless us with more to do more to speak. But if we, he can't trust you, he won't ask you to do anything anymore. Luke 16 to 10. 
Whoever is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. And whoever is unrighteous in very little is also unrighteous in much. We have to remain faithful. We have to remain steadfast and available. If we are available to listen, to pray, and to connect, how can, how can he tell us anything? We must make time in our day to give God our ears, mind, and heart. I know it's hard to make time, and I know it may seem easier to do it our way, but we must learn to do things God way, because if we don't, we won't ever grow. We won't ever develop. We will always be stagnant. Today, if you feel God is giving you a word for someone or calling you to do something, first confirm that he is. Make sure you heard him correctly and don't share it with anyone. Be precise, be direct, and be about your father's business because God is ready to light a fire into your bosom and allow us to share his message. But we must be people that are willing to carry the fire, not start a fire. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your precious word. We thank you for giving us the word, Father God. We thank you for loving us and guiding us, Father God. We ask you today to help us not to be fire starters, but to carry the fire. Father God, if there's anything in our life that's blocking us to carry the fire, please remove it. Father God, make us uh, make us helpers into you. Make us servants. Make us mouthpiece. Make us holy. Make us righteous. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So today's verse is carry, carry the fire, not start it. Hold on just a second. Sorry about that. I need to turn my phone off. Okay. So we want to carry the fire of God. We can't do that with unrighteous hands. We can't do it with unholy hands. I think I messed up on a part when I said this here. We have to remain faithful. We have to remain steadfast and vulnerable. If we aren't available to listen and to pray and to connect. How could he tell us anything? That's right. There's gold. We have to be able to get on our knees and connect with God. Some people are in awe of people getting words from God and seeing visions and stuff. And that is a very powerful thing, but you can do that too. When you connect with God, we have to be people that are ready to connect with God, not people that are just quick prayers. People stay in his presence to receive. And as you grow in God, some people hear it immediately. Some people hear it when they enter a room. Some people hear it when they're talking to someone. It depends on your growth and how much time you give. The time you give, the much more he will give. And I had to learn that in my walk with God, that the more time I spend under his anointing, under his, his presence, and feel his presence and communicate and wait for him, that's one thing I, I wish the Holy Spirit allowed me to teach is how to wait on God in prayer. Like I always say, I don't never teach nothing that he don't tell me to teach. If he don't give me the words to teach it, I won't teach it. But to wait on God in prayer is sitting and disconnecting everything. And I've said this before, turn off your TV, turn off your phone, leave a message, send a bird, send a mailman, tell everyone, hey, I need time with God. And a lot of times when people know your walk with God, they will, they will honor that. But do you have that one that will say, oh, you must don't love me because you're not spending time with me. I do love you. That's why I'm spending time with God. So he can help me deal with my relationship with you. I'm being funny. But seriously, when we spend time with God, it's, it's something peaceful. It's something that's simply amazing. I, I can turn off everything. I normally text my parents or my sister. I say, hey, I'm going in my prayer closet. And they know, hey, don't bother her or don't, don't text her, don't call her. And, you know, I don't really have people texting me so much. I don't have to worry about that. But I just have to worry about my mom and sister. But that's besides the point. I turn my phone off and I literally sometimes sit. And I sit in peace, quiet. And I wait for him to give me a word. And sometimes I just wait for him just to talk to me. I don't ask for anything. I just sit and wait for him to talk to me. And when I do, I normally write it down. He gave me the gift of um, scribe anointing. So I, I sit there. I write what he says to me. And I write to him back or I say it out loud. It depends on, you know, what I feel like he wants from me. I, I can feel that in, in, in his presence. So now he just wants me to sit and listen to him talk. So now he was just be in his presence. But back at the topic at hand, when you get a word from God, like as if I'm sitting here, I'm getting a word from God. I don't go running to this person, running to that person, convey that message. No, I don't. I sit here. And I write it down. I pray over it. I confirm it with God. God, did I get everything you said? 
Am I doing everything you, you want me to say? Am I telling the right person? And once he do that, I go directly to that person or I text that person, hey, you got a minute? Or sometimes I text someone so they can have it written because a lot of people are like, can you text me what you said God said to me? And so a lot of times I text it to them. And I text them I'm like, this is what God just said to the Lord. And most of the time people say, man, most of the time most people won't in detail. And if I can give detail, I give detail. But most of the time I give exactly what God says, nothing more, nothing less. I don't do the, the dramatics. I don't elongate my words. I say it direct. Because when God can trust you with one thing to speak a word to someone, he's going to give you another and another and another. We have to be about people that are willing to do what God says. The saddest story in the Bible, I think y'all hear me quote the story all, all the time, is about the prophet. He went and told King Jeroboam what he wanted, what God wanted. He allowed someone to deter him, deter him somewhere else. And a lot of times that's what happens. We get a word from God and we're like, no, this person's not going to accept that. I'm not going to say it. Or no, I don't think that person's going to receive it. Or someone might say, um, you know, do you have a word for someone? Yeah, I have a word for someone. You, you go around, you tell it. No, you keep quiet of what God has to say. Because if he wanted to say it to everybody, he would have told everyone. But he told it to you. We have to learn how to be truth sayers and, and, and be quiet about things that God is telling us to do. And this prophet believed in another prophet and followed exactly what this prophet said. He's like, come on, let me go feed you. Let's just come back to my house. Let's just, just eat and drink. He followed him and the prophet lied to him, but God told him, do not eat, do not drink. So God already told him, but he went off course. That can happen to any of us. Nathan, when he had to talk to David, I bet that was hard to do, to, to, to actually go to a king and say, hey, I, I think you're doing wrong because the king could kill you right there. But because David being a man of God, even though he was in sin, he was a man of God and he heard and he knew what Nathan was saying was the truth. And sometimes that's not easy to do. I had to give many words to many people. And when I give that word, sometimes I'm scared because I'm like, I don't want them to get angry. But as I grew in God, I realized that I'm here to serve God. And that's the mindset you have to get in that I'm here to serve God. I am a vessel, a mouthpiece of God. And what can mere man do to me? And it's a Bible verse that says that, why are you worried about someone that can just destroy the body, but not worried about someone that can destroy the soul? Let me find that verse real quick for us. I don't want to quote it right. Matthew 10, 28. Do not be afraid of those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can both destroy both the soul and body in hell. Don't be worried about mere men. They can do nothing to you. They can hurt your feelings. They can break your confidence. They can maybe hurt you physically. But what can they do compared to what God can do? We have to keep that mindset. Let's go back. Let's go to some of our references today. Um, Numbers 22. If you if you got your Bibles, go to Numbers 22. When you there, go to verse 38. He says, well, I have come to you now, Balaam replied, but I can't say whatever I please. I must speak only what God puts in my mouth. We must only speak what God put in our mouth. When you're a pastor, a prophet, or you get a word, because God can use anyone. God just doesn't use just pastors and prophets. He, he used the donkey one time. He, he can use any way to give you a word. So I'm, I'm speaking to someone that is either trying to step into ministry or trying to make their first steps or scared to give a word. Give that word. If you know in your spirit, man, that God gave you that word, go speak that word and say nothing less. That's why I write everything down so I cannot deter from what God has said to me. He said, I must speak only what God puts in my mouth. We have prophets and pastors now that say whatever comes out of their mind, they say it comes from God. And you can rightly, you can see that it wasn't rightly divided. But we must be people that teach us ourselves. I tell anyone, don't rely on your pastor. Don't rely on me. Don't rely on anyone to teach you. Loud, rely on the Holy Spirit to teach you the word. Because how will you know if someone's telling you the word of, word of God wrong if you haven't even picked up your Bible and read it? 
How will you know if that person is telling you something that's not in the word when you don't even pick up your Bible? Every day we need to consume our word and wait for God to give us the right words to speak. So now I'm even speaking to someone, saving, trying to minister to someone, to save someone's soul. You're going to need the right word. You're going to need that Bible verse. Or the Lord might be trying to tell you something to tell to them as you speak to them. And when that happens, you must be able and available to hear the word and hear God speak. And as you read the word, you grow. You grow mentally. You grow emotionally. You change. People don't understand the power that's in the power of the word of God when you study it and you show yourself approved. He can show he can trust you with so much, but you got to be able to show yourself approved by studying first. That's the first step of anything. God just not going to give just any old person a word. Sometimes, sometimes this person can be a, a, a babe in Christ. And that babe in Christ is studying every day and God can come to that babe in Christ and say, hey, I need you to talk to Prophet Lou. She's out of order. Go speak to her. Oh, I can't speak to Prophet Lou. No, no, no. No, speak to Prophet Lou. Tell Prophet Lou when she's out of order. And that's how we all should be because we all are servants of God and we all are learning. No one shouldn't be so high up in God that they can't be corrected because you never know how God is going to correct you. That's why we need to go to God every day in prayer. But you're not correct. If you're not going to God in prayer, how can you be corrected by God if you're not listening for his warnings? Hello, somebody. Okay, let's go on to our next reference. Titus 1 and 16. Go to Titus. Titus 1. Verse 16. They claim to know God, but by their actions they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good. You see, it says it right here. When you're detestable, you're disobedient, you're not fit to do anything good and anything for God. They claim to know God, but their actions deny him. Your actions, the way you walk, the way you carry yourself, the way you behave in public, the way you behave behind closed doors, the way you treat the person that's on the street that's asking for money. Do you brush them off and say, hey, get away from me. I don't have nothing. Why are you even come to me? No. If you have some money and your Lord leads you, give them some money. But if you don't want to give them no money, treat them with respect because you don't know who you're entertaining. You could be entertaining an angel. We must be careful how we speak to one another. We must be careful that we obey the word of God because of disobedience carries a heavy weight when you're in walking and you're calling in God. And I promise you this, when you disobey God, I promise you, you're going to remember the moment that you did it. Because you're going to think to yourself, when you're getting, I call it spanked because God, God will discipline us. You know, people don't like, yeah, we have grace and mercy, but God will discipline us. And when you're in the disciplining, disciplining season and you're sitting there, you're like, how did I get here? He's going to call to your attention. What did you do to get here? We have to remember that we always have to be obedient because when you're disobedient, you're unfit to do anything because how can he trust you if you're disobedient? We have to learn to be obedient to God. We have to learn how to consume the word of God. So the two things right now we need to know, we need to listen and pray to God and we need to listen to, and we need to know to be obedient to God. Pray to God, listen in obedience. Okay, let's go to our, our, our third and last reference. Romans 16. Romans 16. Verse 18, for such people are not serving our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk, flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. Okay, we're going to start back at the top of this. For such people are not serving our Lord Jesus Christ. Not every person that put pastor in front of their name, put prophet in front of their name, apostle in front of their name, is not serving God. It, it, it goes on to say, it says, for they, own, they serve their own appetite by smooth words and flattery. They deceive the minds of the naive. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you're a babe of Christ, and or when you're not partaking, because even people that have been serving God 20, 30 years are not partaking the amount that they should be in the amount in the word of God. So when you are a naive person, or you're not consuming the, uh, the, the Bible 
the way you should, you come naive. If you are easily deceived by smooth talk and flattery words. That could be telling you, oh, it's okay to do this, that, and the third. When the word simply says, don't do this. Oh, it's okay. God, God said you could do a little bit of that. That's okay. When the word says, do not do that. But because you don't read your word, you're, you're easily conned. That's why I tell people on Noonday Prayer, pray, make sure you pray for a di- discerning of spirits. Because when you have that, you'll be able to tell when someone's just using flattering words and smooth talk. You can tell a smooth talker. You can tell it a mile away. You're like, no, no, thank you. I'm good. I'm going to go on to another church. I'm going to turn the station. I'm going to skip this person. You have to learn how to discern people's spirit by asking God to give you the discerning of spirits. Verse 17, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause division and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. You have people that are set out to tell you something totally different because that's their plan. You have people that will see that you're walking in the anointing of God, just like the man in 2 Kings or 1 Kings 17. They seen that that man was walking in the purpose of God. They purposely, he purposely told his son, load my horse up. Let's go to town. I need to find this man. He found this man and talked this man out of the will of God by taking him to his home to eat and drink. Just like this person here. They cause divisions and obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teachings you have learned. Keep away from them. It tells us right there, verse 17. Keep away from them. When you know someone is not rightly dividing the word, stop growing, going to that church. Stop listening to that person because that person's dead on the inside. And when you meet someone that's dead on the inside, they can easily make any way around them dead on the inside. If they are not partaking in the word of God, if you're not connecting with the true vine every day, I'm telling you this, this person will cause you to be just as deceitful, just as dead on the inside because you are no longer consuming the word of God for yourself. We have to be people that keep away from people like that. We have to be people that ask God, hey, God, I found this teacher. Let's just use me. Prophetess Lou, is she a woman of God? Okay, God, I'm listening to this person. Is this person a man of God? Put these people before God and he will tell you this person is rightly dividing the the word. Listen to them. But you must also read the word for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Read it yourself. And anything I ever say, correct me. Because I'm willing to learn. So when God gives you a word, don't be about starting a fire in other people's lives and causing a fire while spreading gossip. Be a person that carries the fire. Don't want to be the person that starts the fire. We always want to be the person that carries it, carrying our bosom. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed today's devotional. Um, I really miss teaching y'all and, and talking to y'all about the word of God. Um, I hope you all have been doing well. And I hope you all remember that Jesus loves you. I love you too. Have a blessed day. Thank you.